Hello, people. I am Jabby Kuwait, joined by Achara Kirk. What's up? We're looking at how the IPL became one of the richest leagues in cricket and sports from CNBC. Thank you guys for joining us. Make sure to hit that subscribe button, bell icon, all notifications, and pretty please vote this up to let YouTube know you're enjoying what you're watching. While you're subscribing and upvoting, consider subscribing to CNBC's YouTube channel. There's a link in the description below if you want to click on that, give the original an upvote, and subscribe to them from there. All right, here we go. Cricket. It's a sport that dates back over 400 years, and as of 2019, it is officially played in 104 countries around the world. A lot. But cricket's popularity is starting to take a hit, and things are especially bad in the country of its birth, the UK. Ratings there have fallen off a cliff, less people are playing the sport, and attendance at traditional test cricket matches is falling. Part of the problem, you can no longer watch cricket on TV for free in the UK. In 2005, Rubbish. the sport became a pay-to-watch event on TV, when the England Cricket Board sold the broadcasting rights to Sky Sports. By selling out to Sky Sports, whilst that brought a lot of money into the game for the clubs and the ECB, it killed the television audience. Um, and since that day, we've seen attendances decline, we've seen participation decline, um, we've seen you know the sport really struggle to generate the next generation of fans and players. Another problem? Attention spans appear to be getting shorter. Yeah. Traditional games known as test matches last for five days, and cricket enthusiasts just aren't as patient as they used to be. So you are asking people to give up a lot of their leisure time, um, and we know that working commitments are higher in the UK now than ever before. People are being asked to work more and have, have less disposable income and free time, so that, that's a big factor as well with a sport like cricket. But there is one country where cricket is more popular than ever, India. Cricket's worldwide fan base is comprised of roughly 1 billion people, and the Indian subcontinent alone makes up 90% of those fans. Jesus wow. Christ. In India, the country wow. adopted a brand new, shorter format of the game that has drastically cut down on playing time from days to hours. The Indian Premier League, or the IPL, has only been around for 12 years, but it's fast become one of the most popular and valuable cricket leagues on the planet. Can I just say something that might offend some of you? I've always thought this three-day, five-day game thing it always sounded absurd to me as an American. Oh, yeah. I mean, even as a Brit, honestly, I'm like, five days? Really? Really? Well, I mean, <laughs> I think that you're part of the evolution towards this yeah. eventual outcome, yeah. which is it's got low attendance and low interest because it's just like people don't have that kind of time. And it's interesting where this all started from, which is they were trying to generate more revenue to inject into the teams and the sport and whatnot. But by doing that and selling off to Sky, they've completely killed the attendance and the interest in it, which is like kind of crazy when you think, oh, you know, they're trying to make this move over here to profit. But by increasing this profit here short term, they jumped over the long term gain of, you know, that attendance. But who's to say that wasn't going to happen anyway? Yeah. Well, you know, I'm, I'm thinking back to when I lived in the UK and I don't remember having any friends who were really into cricket. Like everyone was more into, first of all, it was football or soccer. Right. And then well, after what that, I, what I call soccer, what you call yeah, soccer. Okay. Yeah. And then after that, rugby. Sure. And then. Yeah, cricket, no one was really that into it, but I used to work at an office which had a lot of Australians and one Kiwi, okay. and they were really into it. So yeah, it's interesting that in the country where it originated, it's kind yeah. of dying off. It's probably dying off anyway is my guess, because I mean, look what ha happened with Joe Rogan when he went from YouTube to Spotify, people came with him and like Spotify's stock went through the roof. Right. So I think that if the audience was there, they'd go anyway. The IPL's brand value has nearly doubled in the last five years. Wow. In 2018, the league was valued at $6.3 billion. Whoa. It rakes in $510 million each year from its broadcasting rights deal, making it the only cricket league in the world to crack the top 20 most valuable media rights deals in all of professional sports, joining the ranks of the NFL, the NBA, and MLB. So how all three did the of them IPL from America. become one of the most lucrative cricket leagues on the planet? And could this surge in popularity engineer a turnaround for cricket on the world stage? The first record of cricket being played as an adult sport was in 1611 in England. The sport started to take shape in the 17th century, and by 1709, it was recognized as a legitimate pro sport. This was about the time that professional village cricketers were hired to join county teams. By the early 18th century, cricket was the leading sport in London and other counties across England. Because of the reach of the British Empire, the sport took root around the world. When it came to the uh, British Empire and when it came to uh, Britain colonizing the world. Cricket was seen as a way potentially of civilizing the world. Uh, cricket has a 
a series of moors, as a series of codes of conduct, such as walking when the when the umpire gives you out. Uh, there was an element as well of muscular Christianity, that healthy exercise was very, very good. As early as the 17th century, cricket was being played in English colonies in North America, and during the 18th century, colonists introduced cricket to the West Indies and Australia, while mariners from Britain's East India Trading Company brought the game to India. In the 19th century, New Zealand and South Africa also began to play the sport. Over the years, cricket has evolved into three different formats, Test Cricket, One Day, and 2020. The Test Cricket format debuted in 1877. These matches last five days. Jesus yeah. Christ. One Day Cricket started back in 1971, and as the name implies, cricket matches conclude within a single day. And in 2003, 2020 was established. 2020 is a streamlined version of cricket that allows for faster gameplay and more scoring. 2020 games typically wrap up in about three hours. Each version of cricket has leagues around the world, but 2020 is the most popular format of the game today. And in India, it created its own 2020 league in 2007 when it rolled out the Indian Premier League. In India, cricket is huge. Yeah. It's been a staple in Indian sports since the 1700s, and it's currently the most popular sport in the country. The IPL is one of the richest sports properties in the world. And while the IPL isn't the only cricket league in India, it is the most successful league in the country. The 48-day annual wow. tournament was created in 2007 with the help of the Board of Control for Cricket in India and Indian businessman Lalep Modi. Even though cricket already had a few pro cricket leagues, they wanted to capitalize on the commercial success of 2020. So they modeled the IPL in a similar nature to pro sports in the US. The IPL was specifically modeled after the likes of the NFL, hmm. which has a decentralized league, meaning that all teams are owned and operated independently. Also oh, similar okay. to the NFL model, the IPL is its own league with its own unique structure. There is a separate T20 World Cup where India competes, but that's different from the IPL. Even though matches are all held in India, team rosters are chock full of top international talent. Ah. In 2018, teams spent $94 million to buy 169 players in an auction, up from its $14 million for 66 players in 2017. Wow. But what you've actually got in the IPL are franchises who represent uh, a city, uh, a place, an industrial heartland, and you've got therefore th the support of some major entrepreneurs. So rather than, let's say, Delhi against North Zone, you've got your IPL franchises based around the cities, and that has actually had a massive impact in terms of global cricket. To make sure the stands are filled with as many IPL fans as possible and to maximize TV viewership, matches are typically played in the evening and on weekends. The IPL is a huge moneymaker in India. Since 2014, the IPL's brand valuation has doubled to $6.3 billion. Dang. The reason? The IPL has one of the largest fan bases for a single sports league in the world. During its opening week of the 2018 season, the IPL broke records when 371 million viewers tuned in to watch. And by the last week of the tournament, a total of 769 million fans watched the 2018 IPL season. Wow. The ad revenue generated for that season was over $276 million, according to Star India's managing director. High ratings and ad dollars were a big part of why major US media companies had their eyes on IPL's broadcasting rights. When the IPL launched in 2008, the league issued media rights to Singapore-based sports marketing agency, World Sport Group. They broadcasted IPL matches on India's Sony Max TV channel. Under the terms of the 10-year contract, World Sport Group paid the IPL approximately $1 million per match in its first year for the exclusive broadcasting rights. The overall value of that broadcasting deal was $918 million. When the broadcasting deal expired wow. in 2017, there was a global bidding war for exclusive rights for the IPL. Fox and Sony put in competing bids, while Facebook also put its hat in the ring for the 2018-2022 digital rights of the IPL, making a $600 million offer. Those TV and digital rights eventually went to Fox. Wow. The American broadcaster struck a five-year $2.55 billion deal for the global media rights of the IPL. The price per match jumped from $1 million to about $8.47 million per game. Wow. For comparison, the NFL cost per game is around $22.5 million. 
the English Premier League is around $13.2 million. The NBA is close to $2 million, and the MLB is just $630,000 per game. No one cares about baseball. Just two years after the ink drop. I was just about to mention this, too. I was just about to talk about Disney owning Fox, because I'm like, hold on a second. So wait, Disney owns ESPN, and now they also own the broadcasting rights to the IPL? That's nuts. Yeah. That's like, whoa. God. And sometime in college, someone was, uh, there was a teacher who was explaining to me, like, we'll explain to the class how much Disney owned, because I had no idea. I think a lot of us didn't even realize just like mm-hmm. how much Disney dominated everything between like the movies, the theme park, the, their subsidiary companies that like Hollywood pictures and whatever. Yeah, TV y- channels you know. like ABC. Or even the Disney channel, right? Yeah. And, and then like find out later on that they own like ESPN. And then furthermore, um, that they have, you know, stake in other countries, like they, you know, they were making movies in India as well. And so now this, I'm like, whoa, <laughs> Jesus. There's this joke in Fight Club that, I mean, I love Disney, don't get me wrong, but there's this joke in Fight Club that uh, when we discover other planets, it's gonna be corporations that take over mm-hmm. and it's gonna be like Planet Denny's and, and whatnot. <laughs> and so I'm, I'm like, I'm convinced that one of the first planets that is named is gonna be Planet Disney. Like, for sure. Yeah, and it's not like they care where the money's coming from. It's yeah. like, it, that makes money. If you look at how much more each match is worth now or, or whatever it is, like how much they pay for each match, like yeah. it went from a million to like eight million? Yeah. Holy crap. Right on the Fox IPL deal, Disney completed a $71 billion deal for Fox Entertainment's assets. One of the assets that Disney now owns is Hotstar, oh, okay. the right. Indian video streaming company. In 2019, that streaming service set a global record for the number of people tuning into a live streaming event. There were 18.6 million concurrent viewers watching the IPL's final match on Hotstar's website and app. And with that kind of viewership, naming rights for the IPL are also huge for the league. I will say this though, I mean, I don't know what Hotstar is like for most of you guys, but as far as my experience has gone, the Disney Plus app has been pretty strong. Oh yeah. Like, I'm not gonna talk disparagingly of other apps. I'm not gonna name any. But there are other apps that don't do it as good as Disney does. Like, I think Netflix is obviously pretty strong. They've had the infrastru- infrastructure. Yeah, they've, they've there been for the doing longest, it for a very long know, time. But Disney definitely has caught up in terms of just having a good system, having a good menu, having something that's easy to navigate with extra features embedded as well. I have some confidence, at least. And my guess would be that the way they handle Hotstar is an improvement because mm-hmm. of the looking at what they did with Disney Plus. So yeah, the IPL's naming rights have changed hands three times from brands DLF to PepsiCo India and finally to Vivo a mobile handset manufacturer in China. Vivo first took over title sponsorship in 2015. And in 2017, Vivo signed a fresh five-year deal with the IPL worth approximately $341 million. In 2018, the average salary of cricket players in the IPL jumped nearly 30% from the year before, all thanks to the massive TV deal signed with Fox in 2017. Before that deal, players across the league had an average salary of $3.9 million. Respectable. But in 2018, the average salary was just over $5 million. Oh. And unlike other major sports leagues, the IPL season is so short that players have a chance to bank even more cash in the off season. (laughs) The IPL takes place in the spring, starting at the end of March or early April and continuing through May. That means cricketers have the flexibility to play for other clubs around the world. Take the Mumbai Indians player Kieran Pollard. In 2017, he earned more than $1 million for two months that he played for the Mumbai Indians in the IPL. In that same year, Pollard had multiple revenue streams from playing for cricket leagues in Australia, Bangladesh, and South Africa. But just as cricket first spread across the world in the 18th century, cricket's latest format of 2020 is similarly taking root across the globe. I want to know, how do you guys feel about international players coming in and playing for India? Like, I... I, like on the one hand, I think that's cool. Like as a like, oh, we can welcome other folks into this and make it even more international, whatever. Or I don't know. Like, but it's even more give us even more notice because like what I'm ultimately driving at is domestically, you have players that are traded between sports teams for states that, that they weren't initially born in. Yeah, I mean, this isn't anything new in sports. Like it, you it, look at you look at the Premier League. Yes, they are English teams, right? Yeah. Uh, like for different cities. 
but so many of the players are international. It's all about money. It's like, can you pay That's for what them bothers or me, not? Though. That's what I'm saying. It's like but, in this country to be president, you have to be born here, right? Or at least right. born, be born on an American base. So but, what I'm trying to say is with the sports, it'd be great if like there was a rule that you had to be born in Chicago to play for Chicago. Sure. But you see, the thing is, you, you can always go back to your home country when you play for your country. So when it comes to like an international cricket match, like I guess, you know, like a test uh, cricket or like the World Cup or whatever, yeah. you're always going to go back and, and play for your country, you know? So even if okay. you're part of a super strong Premier League team because, mm -hmm. you know, that team can afford to buy all the best players, if all the best players are from India, India's still going to kick ass on the international stage when all of those players from the different teams come together for the national team, you know what I mean? Sure. I, I think know. it's cool. I think personally, I, I, I see, think it's I, cool I, if I you see. have the money to get all of the the best players on your yeah, team. Yeah, but then it Why becomes not? a game of wealth instead of a game of like, you know what I'm saying? Do you see how much money like they're putting into this though? I can see that. I just like there's a part of me that just wishes that in order to play for like just keeping it like domestically right for America. Yeah. I just there's a part of me that wishes like okay to play for the L.A. Lakers you have to be born in L.A. You know, as opposed to well we can just buy up anyone from around the country to make our team you know what i'm saying yeah i get it i get it in a way but then also people just want to be able to get the best team possible you know if you have to spend a, a bunch of money to get michael jordan to play on your team it just makes me think the whole thing is a little bit silly <laughs> it's like like you literally just got that person from the other team over there from yeah. another state they're not actually from your state they're just playing for your state now because the money was good i know i wonder how it is though when when you do make that transfer especially when you're playing against different cities and say say you were originally with the delhi team and then sure. you move to the mumbai team yeah. and then when you're like in the mumbai team and then you're suddenly playing against your old teammates like is money. there some sort of weird feeling or sure, yeah sure. or maybe it's, like, it's, it's just, just like well there's two angles to it. it's like oh those are my old friends but like i'm gonna beat your ass yeah you know and then we'll go for a beer afterwards yeah there's even a record-breaking investment for a 2020 league in a country where cricket isn't even remotely popular the u.s in may 2019 usa cricket received a one billion dollar investment from american cricket enterprises to develop a 2020 league in america when's that it's coming? one of the biggest deals for development of domestic cricket in the u.s and the launch of the league is set to take off in 2021 since this, the 2020 cricket format was video, introduced sure. in 2003 it has taken the cricket world by storm and it doesn't seem to be slowing down anytime soon wow that was weird wait when did when did this video come out Oh, it came out Must be like pre-pandemic, right? Probably 2019. 2019. Was right. yeah, yeah, yeah. So little did they know that a, a certain global pandemic would stop the 2020 cricket in the U.S. I mean, I would imagine that would be a terrible time to start 2021, like starting a I brand mean, new sport. I mean, we can see that, that it, the cricket really it, it does have its foot here. It's just not very popular. Like most people don't know much about cricket here or pay attention to it at all. Yeah. Most people here are pretty fixated on what they like already, which, which is, is like football, football, baseball, um, basketball. basketball. Like those are the sports that people pay attention to the most over here. And that's yeah. not likely to change. They've tried to introduce new things like XFL, which is like NFL, but with a different set of rules. It didn't take off. I isn't, mean, at least initially it didn't. Isn't soccer gain, gaining a little bit more popularity over here? Soccer's been popular here, but n I mean, whatever the popularity of soccer is here has been the popularity for a while. Okay. Like we have, you know, the galaxies or whatever it's LA called. LA Galaxy, you baby. Know. Yeah, I mean, he didn't even mention soccer. <laughs> Like it wasn't even up there. Or he that... did. It was the second one. Uh, English Premier League. That's football. For us, though. Oh, yeah, not for you guys. For <laughs> I'm trying to, like, wrap my head around the mentality of why this became such a strong part of India as, like, the Indian soul. Like, why this became the thing. You know what I mean? Because if I look at India like a person, it's a very passionate person. And it's yes. like when it fixates on something, it's like it's, it's like me. It gets fixated on something and then it loves that thing, right? But for me personally, okay, just to simplify it and to help communicate what I'm saying. Back here. Right here. Okay. That's a statue of Cole McGrath. Um, I'm pointing his head, not his crotch. Uh, <laughs> the statue of Cole McGrath. Uh, Cole McGrath is a, a character from a video game called Infamous. Infamous and Infamous 2. That's a game I fell in love with and I just stayed fixated on it for years. So much so that I'm just like waiting for the next one to come around. And I don't really pay attention to a lot of the new games. I'm like, I just kind of stay married to the few franchises that I love from the video game industry, right? Mm -hmm. 
And that's kind of like how India is, is what it seems like. It's like India falls in love with a handful of things, but loves it hard. And I, I can relate to that. And like, so I'm sort of just sort of, I, I, in, in him, in the narrator talking about this, I'm like, I'm just sort of identifying the soul of India. Yeah. And, and why that passion sort of took such a strong foothold and why it became what it is now. Because, you know, the country that started it, <laughs> it's falling apart like crazy there. And then I also began to wonder how long before that happens in India? Like, will that happen in India? Because whatever's going on in England in terms of like people are getting busier, they have all this work and whatever, whatever. It's yeah. like, okay, that's just a matter of time before that happens in India. It's like, you're already seeing it where people are overworked in India, like in, in like the, um, what do you call it? The, the, the big cities and whatnot. Mm -hmm. People are, are working like crazy, like worse hours probably than they do in England. And so it's just a matter of time. You see more of India becoming like the big cities. Yeah, but I think that that's why IPL is so smart, right? Because they've taken this 2020 format and it's shorter. And so even if people are kind of migrating, migrating towards that lifestyle where they're working really hard, you know, everyone still has a smartphone. Everyone can still sure. get Disney Plus Hotstar and stream the game, even if they're working. Like, come on, seriously, bosses out there. If there's a major IPL game going on, everyone knows that no work is getting done. Right. This is a fact. I'm sure of it. Like it's a fact for now. No. <laughs> we have no idea what's going to come in the next 20 years. Sure. We just I don't guess. know. We don't know for sure. I mean, it's entirely yeah. possible this will stay consistent, but it's also possible it'll drastically change in favor of just business. I think people will always enjoy their leisure activities. So whether that is. It's you, a little surprising you, to me that the game got reduced to three hours. I mean, Indians have five day weddings. So <laughs> why? Why take away the five-day games? Yeah, but then if you're playing against like entire leagues and every single team has to go up against every single team for five days, like it, it, it would just take way too long. This way, they're making tons of money and there are weddings it's taking happening. way less time. Weddings are happening all the time in India. No, there. Well, maybe, but also there's a wedding season when most of the weddings take place, right? Or many. How do you the choose the wedding to go to? You just, just go the, to them they, all. They, you, you just want the buffet. They should just have the shoddy IPL Premier League. <laughs> <laughs> the, the Shadi. 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 Shadi Premier League. Yeah. I'm sorry, you know? that we were taught how, that we were mispronouncing it. Just, what you do is you just get rid of all the famous Indian cricket players right now and replace them with newlyweds. <laughs> <laughs> they all have to compete for the. What is it this called? like? What is it Love called? Island IPL version. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love and, is blind IPL but, version. But they, but they get the whoever wins wins the dowry. <laughs> that they were. You know what I'm saying? That would oh, be crazy. This actually sounds like a pretty fun train wreck of a reality <laughs> TV show. I think you should pitch it. But now that you've said it online, it's probably going to get stolen. You're going to see it on Netflix next year. And now that like, you see it online, that means it's, it's there's a date time stamp that shows that I came up with it. <laughs> and you'll be like, you stole my idea. Now give me the money. Just because I came up with the idea doesn't mean I can do anything with it. So how about it? Just send me a dollar. <laughs> One dollar. You heard it here first. You know what was really fascinating to me though was this whole idea of we're going to use cricket to civilize the people. When you think about it and a lot of the rules, at least in, in the traditional version of cricket, it is very much about, you know, like being a gentleman and you're wearing white clothes and, you know, you get a lunch break, you have a tea break. It's very civilized and like gentlemanly. Ugh. When I was listening to that English guy talk, I was just like, oh my God, I'm falling asleep. This, no wonder you guys lost the Revolutionary War. Like, it's just like, <laughs> like oh my we, God. we just made everyone fall asleep? Yeah, yeah, no, y'all are putting yourselves to sleep talking so long. Like, <laughs> so proper and so boring i'm just like oh my god that's why 2020 cricket uh is so much more fun i think yeah because that, that, that five-day test match situation is just like snooze i never understood it when i when i saw people watching i'm like wait a second what what the hell's going on why is this so slow i wouldn't be surprised if the <laughs> queen of england told me herself you're not allowed back in here <laughs> Yeah, I, why do you hate us so much? It's just so boring. Like, the way he was talking is... He, like, listen to him. I, I don't want to go back and play it again. Because <laughs> you're just like... <laughs> I was literally falling asleep. <laughs> like, okay, let me read the title. How the IPL became one of the richest leagues in cricket and sports. Mm -hmm. He like, did go, mm -hmm. he went, um. um I'm like, I'm damn, dude, wake like, up. Okay, okay. You're on okay. camera, bitch. <laughs> Speak faster. <laughs> Got shit to do. Damn. You're so mean. So frustrating. You're not welcome in the UK anymore. Shit, fine. I like it here anyway. I've got all the good shit already. The hoity-toity arguments that y'all have on train. Not actually throwing a fist. <laughs> India's like, fuck this. Three hours. That's it. 
<laughs> I'm gonna cut this down. You can take your gentleman shit away. Yeah, and who too needs long. that? Taking no, too long. It's, we want the drama. We want the fun. We're gonna come at this with a fierce passion. Yeah. I'm telling you, Shadi PL, SPL, Premier League. Uh, wait, hold on. Shadi. I, Indian Premier League, IPL. So yeah, like the Shadi, sh Shadi Cricket League, S SCL, there you go. Have okay. wedding, have, have wedding. How come there's no female uh, cricket league? Is there? Is that a thing? I don't know. Anyways, maybe, maybe, no, I think there is. There is. It's it's probably like how the women's the WNBA. WNBA is less Which popular than watches. the NBA. Yep. And yeah. Anyway, you guys, thanks so much for hanging out. I'm Jabby Kuwait. This is Acharika. Peace out.